Hey guys, welcome back to Moe's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Conflict of Heroes, Storms of Steel, Kursk 1943. This is a game designed by Uwe Eichert and Gunter Eichert and published by Academy Games. This is the third edition rules for the Conflict of Heroes series. And if you're familiar with Conflict of Heroes, it is a tactical war game set in World War II. Uh, there are various fronts that are covered. This is the Kursk area and there is a lot of armor battles in this. The third edition rules have changed things up quite a bit and in good ways. I saw it first at WBC a couple years ago when Uva was explaining to me what was going on with the series and how the, the direction of the rules was changing. And I liked what I heard. I remember before everything was managed by action points. There are still caps in the game, command action points, but those are used in different ways than they were in prior iterations. So let's take a look at the back of the box and see what this game's all about. Take command of the largest tank forces in history. In the wake of a stinging defeat at Stalingrad, the German armies massed for an all-out offensive against the growing Soviet Bulgic Kursk. Learning of their plans, the Soviet Supreme High Command prepares a formidable defense against Germany's best panzer forces. The Storms of Steel begin. If you like tank battles, Storms of Steel is for you. Command platoon and company-sized forces of individual tanks, squads, crew-served weapons, and more. Confront the same tactical dilemmas historical commanders faced in World War II during one of the most ferocious heavy armor engagements in history. Seize your opportunities as they arise, determine your best options as the battle unfolds, and guide your forces to victory. And as you can see, here is an example of the map and the counters on the left-hand side. It is for two to four players, ages 14 up, and one to two hours. And yes, it is playable for up to four players, so you can play in two teams of two. It does play well as a team game. So let's take a look inside and see what you get. Inside we have our counter trays. These are different than those you're familiar with if you have earlier editions of Conflict of Heroes. These are now individual trays, one for each set of forces and also for your admin counters and your cards, which we see here. We've got our cards. We've got some, looks like tile spacers. These are your stress tokens. And then we've got our weighted D10 and a pair of D6s in this one. We've got the different tracks that you're gonna use in the game. A flyer for Academy's catalog of games. A couple of player aid cards. Our rule book. The mission book. Our map boards, which are all mounted. And our counter sheets. So let's set up some of the map boards and take a closer look at the game. And here's a look at the formatted map boards that come with the game. They fold in half, which is how they can be easily stored. You can see the crease on the boards where the fold is, but beautifully mounted and really gorgeous terrain. I love that photorealistic finish that Academy Games use in their, in their games. It really gives that, that real world look when you're playing the Conflict of Heroes series. And you can arrange them any way you want, any way the firefight book says to arrange them. And you can also use these in concert with other versions of Conflict of Heroes. And Academy Games also includes a sheet of overlay tiles. You could easily pop these out and change up the complexion of the battle space here on these maps. And here's a look at the counter sheets that come with the game. Really nice thick counters. If you have played any of the Conflict of Heroes series, you're already familiar with these counters, but pre-rounded, beautiful, thick, really nice renderings of the units on them and easy to read numbers. You've got plenty of infantry, AT rifles, 50 millimeter mortars, 76 millimeter ATGs, SU-76, Churchill Mark IIIs, SU-122s, SU-76s, T-34s, uh, various iterations of those, A, Bs, and Cs. And we've even got some Sturmorovics and 57 millimeter ATGs over here on the right, a bunch of different units for the Soviets. We have a great assortment of German units as well, infantry, engineers, uh, MG 42s, 34s, Pac 38s, 40s, Panzer 3s, 4s, uh, Panthers, Tigers. We've got some half track Stukas. We've got a lot of stuff to play with for the Germans as well. Third counter sheet has more Soviet and German units as well as damage counters down at the bottom. We've got T 34s, T 70s, some Scouts, and KV 1s for the Soviets. For the Germans, more half tracks. We've got also captured T 34s. For the Germans on the right hand side. And the final counter sheet has all of your admin counters for caps, control markers, damage markers, some different types of terrain, smoke, mines, things like that. Then we have the command action point track. It explains to you the D10 spent check 
as well as a D6 number check. On the bottom here is a reference table. It's going to explain to you the chances you're going to have based on the action cost of being spent or not for each unit. Then we have our score and round tracker. And we'll take a look at our player aid cards. We have an example of the counters and explanation of how to read each bit on the counters. Our common turn actions, combat, pre-round sequence, and then your common cap modifiers. The next sheet is your terrain effects chart for your maps and overlays, and then fortifications and obstacles down at the bottom. Now we'll take a look at a few of the battle cards that come with the game. This is a 48-card deck. Each player will have a hand of these cards, and it gives the players a little bit of agency in trying to control the chaos of combat. In this instance, you have scout teams that can reveal hidden enemy units with an LOS and three hexes of a unit, or hide an eligible unit. The sniper fire here, if you roll a 1d6, the opponent loses caps this round equal to the result. And finally, you have battlefield confusion. Add a 3 AP penalty to an enemy unit's action cost before it's spent check roll. This is the veteran deck. There are 10 cards in this deck, and they will be assigned to you based on the scenario. This will give buffs to your units like this one, rapid move, move an extra hex better equipped to get a weapons bonus, experienced veteran soldier. They modify a spent check on a D10 result by one after the result or after the roll. Then you have motivated leader rally bonus. You lower your rally number by two. And there are a bunch of these throughout the deck that will do different things. And again, as I said, these are only given to you assigned by the scenario. And just like the veteran card, there is a weapons deck. This will be assigned to you by the scenario and this will give you little bonuses here like grenades, molotovs, demolitions, aircraft, and divisional artillery bonuses that can be used throughout the game. Now we'll take a look at the rulebook that comes with the game. It is a 39-page rulebook, full-color, glossy rulebook. Inside, it gets you started uh, with the uh, Mission 1 setup for the first couple pages, and you get to Game Overview, a note for returning gamers to explain to you the differences in the third edition and the table of contents. As you can see here, it tells you when to play the different missions. That's because Academy Games use a step learning approach. First 13 pages will get you going for missions 1 and 2, then a couple more pages after that for three and four and so on and so forth, all the way down to the final rules, which will get you through to 11 to 16. And an explanation on the right-hand side that anything that's in red, any red boxes, will give you an illustrated step-by-step -step example of play. Blue boxes give you designer's notes, as well as strategy, insights, and game design philosophy. Then you have a listing of your components, general setup, turns and actions, and then we get into the spent check, which I had mentioned before about a weighted D10. That is this right here that comes with the game. And you may notice if you look at it, it may be hard to read, but they have some repeating numbers. And it's explained right here. There are two ones, two threes, and two fives in the game. There are two fours, sixes, and sevens also. But this is uh, weighted to give you a little bit harder chance at making your spent check because every time you move now, you're going to roll a d10. You're going to see if they are spent or not. If they're not spent, they can continue on. So a little bit of a push your luck element to the game. And then when they are spent, you can still use them. You just have to use your command action points to do that. Just like you can use your command action points to modify die rolls, you can also use it to move your units. Again, it's about managing the chaos on the battlefield, managing your troops on, in combat. Then you have stress, passing, uh, command support. Mentioned stress, and they come with these tile spacers in the game to mark your stress. And that is what's going to happen. You get a one AP pl or plus one AP stress penalty to your action cost. So when you keep pushing your unit, it may get stress. And if it's stress, it's going to cost you a little bit more. So you have to make that determination as to how far you want to push your units. Then you have stall action, command support, and then your action costs, unit positions, foot unit movement, terrain types, roads, units entering the mission, Fire zone, target hex, and then your line of sight explanation with illustrated examples, resolving attacks, attack ratings, hit numbers, flank attacks. Then you get into the attack actions again in red. These are all illustrated examples of play. Hits and rallying. These are your soft target hit markers. There are also hard target hit markers. You will draw a, a counter when you get hit to see what it is. So you never know what it's going to be. You don't know what your opponent's hit marker is either, which adds that nice fog of war, which I really like in this game. Then you get into the cards, which we've talked about, round end and pre-round sequence, group actions, hidden units, and more examples of play here, hills and elevations with plenty of illustrated examples, mortars and artillery, artillery strikes, how to carry those out, and then you get into your vehicles. This is Kursk, so there's going to be a lot of vehicle combat here in, this, in these scenarios. Uh, vehicle bonus movement, moving uphill, transports, and there's your armored target hit markers.
special unit rules, armored personnel carriers, fortifications and obstacles. Some more illustrated examples, destroying fortifications and obstacles, flamethrowers, alternate player counts, and then note from the designers here on the last page. And then we get into the listing of the battle cards, the weapons cards, and then the units in the game. And then on the back is your index and design credits. This is the mission book that comes with the game. It is a 39 page book. Again, nice glossy full color manual. And inside the front cover gives you an explanation on how to read your mission brief. And then we get into the mission map itself and how to set that up. Now we get into the missions themselves. Courier Satchel, which is your first mission. The first one and two missions are there to introduce you to the game with the first 13 pages of the rules. And it gives you the German orders, Soviet orders, and then the commander's forces for both sides. And then a little explanation here for new players, an optional adrenaline card that could be used, as well as the units and how they're set up. Twilight's Last Gleam for mission two. Then we get into setting up the stage for Kursk. A few pages of text here that will give you an outline of the Battle of Kursk. Then we get into Mission 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Wounded Tiger, Black Knight of the Steppe, Mission 9. And now we're using some of the overlays which we saw before I showed you that came with the game as well. Tanks, a big tank battle, which is always fun to have. And another big battle here. There's two-parter here for Luchki, mission 12 and 13. And then battle for Cherkoskoya. You can see they're getting more and more expansive. And Dance of the Totenkopfs. And that looks like a really, really busy scenario here for the final one. So that's the way you want to end it on a really high note. And at the back, you have the mission index and design credits. And that is a look at everything you get inside of Conflict of Heroes, Storms of Steel, Cursed 1943, a game designed by the father and son design team, Uwe and Gunter Eichert, and published by Academy Games. As we've come to expect from Academy Games, a fantastic quality production. This is nothing short of that here. I love the addition of these game trays because now you can separate your forces out, one for each tray, and then the admin counters in the other tray which is really good when you're playing up to four players. So you have two to each side. You don't want to have everybody reaching in to that, you know, counter tray that was there before. It was a beautifully done tray, but when you have too many hands in the pot, something's going to get knocked around. And on top of that, you had to leave the box out. Now you don't need to do that. You can just hand each player a tray or each team a tray, and they can manage their own counters from there. Big, chunky, pre-rounded counters. We've got the overlays and then the beautifully done matted maps. I love the photorealistic finish to these. It is really outstanding. We have the battle cards here that are used in the game. I like that in the Conflict of Heroes series because it gives a little bit of agency to the players as they're trying to manage the chaos of combat. The stepped approach in the rulebook is really great. And on top of that, something I didn't mention before, at the bottom right corner, it says here, after setting up the mission, you can view the teaching videos at academygames.com slash SOS, or you can just scan the QR code with your phone, watch it on your phone, because that's one of the best ways to learn is to have somebody show you. So looking forward to getting this one on the table and doing a review pretty soon. Hope this helps you guys out if you've been curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.